time now to do your final viewing. In the next five minutes we will begin the service so all persons present if you are so inclined to view I invite you at this time to take your viewing, the last view because remember when we close here we will not be reopening at the graveside. So we're asking for the next five minutes, just keep it open for the next five minutes and then we'll close and then we will start the rest of the program. We're asking that as best as possible you find a seat. There are seats on the, the upper level here that you can employ and other seating arrangements. So please ensure that everyone is seated and the aisle is kept clear at all times. Thank you so much.
Mati. Hai. In war time. Ada. Jadi.
switch. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus in His mercy and His grace.
Inspector of Police, whose life we celebrate today. In the face of adversity and in a world that often values mediocrity, he stood as a giant among men because of his humble demeanor, his concern for others, and his keen commitment to service, all of which was outmatched only by his love for God and his love for his family. Inspector Franklin Hunter will long be remembered as an outstanding crime fighter and a mentor and guide to many. For he gave sterling service to his country as a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force for over the past 35 years. During his police career, he made an indelible mark and earned 20 commendations. Inspector Hunter was assigned to the Police Academy, Mobile Reserve, Area 1 Headquarters, Hanover, and the St. James Divisions, where he was faithfully serving in the St. James Division until the time of his unexpected passing. It is for this reason his life is being celebrated today in a funeral service being accorded police honors. As such, this service will be conducted with the highest level of decorum and solemnity that it deserves. As an official service, it should be concluded within two hours and each tribute allotted no more than three minutes. Allow me then to welcome and acknowledge the presence of and participation of the following persons. Deputy Commissioner of Police, Mr. Clifford Blake. Assistant Commissioner of Police, Mr. Clifford Chambers in charge of Area 1 Police Formation. Senior Superintendent of Police, Mr. Vernon Ellis, Commanding Officer for the St. James Division. Superintendent Sharon Beeput, Commanding Officer for the Hanover Division. Other gazetted officers in attendance. Corporal Rowan James, Chairman of the Police Federation. 
other co-workers and colleagues, including members of the St. James Division, <clears throat> the batch members of which Inspector Hunter was a part, the JCF band and the choir, the clergy on the platform, bereaved family members, and all of you well-wishers who are sharing in this moment here in the church or on the social media platform of the JCF. Today we have gathered to mourn the passing of Inspector Franklin Hunter, whose life impacted ours and, our, and whose death has left a void we will never be able to fill. We will never forget the time he spent among us. And truly, our lives without him will never be the same. And so, may his memories live on in our hearts. And may God's peace and comfort be ours as together we mourn his loss. After all, weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We will remember him. We will remember him. As we continue with the program, we'll be having the first lesson coming to us from Deputy Commissioner of Police, Mr. Clifford Blake, who is representing the Commissioner today. So at this time, I invite him to come and to share with us the passage of Scripture. Thank you. Officiating ministers, members of the JCF, bereaved family members, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. I am here representing the Commissioner of Police, Major General Anderson, Anthony Anderson, who is unavoidably absent today. And I'll be reading his tribute, and I'll also be reading the first lesson. But before I read the first tribute, May I just also pay my honor and respects to the life of late Inspector Franklin Hunter. He's someone I personally worked with. When he and Inspector Egbert Broadwell, they had that team at Air One headquarters. That was the go-to team. Every incident, you ask, where is Brody and his team? You know, they responded to everything. And Inspector Hunter, then I think he was acting corporal or constable Hunter at the time. You know, he was a critical member. And, you know, those of us who remember the incident at Grange Hill back in 1997 uh, when those officers were trapped in it. And I could name numerous other operations that I personally went on with that team. And, you know, they stood out as a very effective and disciplined team. But speaking specifically to Inspector Hunter, um, Mother Merlin, I want to say thank you for birthing, and not only birthing, raising a very disciplined and committed, a gentleman. You know, it's a, you did an excellent job. And for that, I want to say personally, thanks to you. I... I will now read the tribute from the Commissioner of Police. It is with great sadness that I lead the JCF family in mourning the loss of our colleague, Mr. Franklin Wayne Hunter, Inspector of Police. Franklin Hunter enlisted in the Jamaica Constable Force on September 12, 1988. Those of us who were around, remember what was September 12, 1988? Hurricane Gilbert. And during his reward, reward in tenure, he served the Police Academy, Mobile Reserve, Era 1 Headquarters, Hanover, and the St. James Police Division. His personality, drive, and an exceptional work ethic saw him being the recipient of 20 commendations in execution of graceful service to the people of Jamaica for 35 years. With deep regret, his untimely death on May 24, 2023, 
has dealt a significant blow, but we are confident in the comfort of the Almighty for all who grieve. To Franklin's mother, Merlin, his children, Franklin, Javier, and Francheta, his brothers, Marvin, Alan, and Eric, other bereaved family members, please accept our deepest sympathy for the loss you have endured. We pray that God will comfort you through this time of grief. The passing of this law enforcement practitioner has cut short his contribution to our collective effort in the fight against crime. As we mourn his passing, let us pledge to carry on the fight of reducing crime in Jamaica, thereby making our communities safer. You will always remain in our hearts, Mr. Franklin Wayne Hunter, Inspector of Police. May his soul rest in peace. Major General Antony Anderson, CD, Commissioner of Police. I will now read the first lesson. It is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, and I'll read verses 52 to 57. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. So we'll be having the tributes. <clears throat> there are seven of them. So we have to manage this very carefully going forward. The third tribute from Gilbert Batch um, will be done by DSP Williams Mullings. So we'll be having the divisional tribute first, then the Police Federation, the Gilbert Batch, the children, Mr. Everest Cook, JP, Councillor, Upper St. James, Jamaica Labour Party, Mr. Arnold Kelly, Shereen Williams Lawrence, in that order. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Like a sheep sailing out on a trip so rough and long, so far from shore, so far from home, I said.
Members of the clergy, Mr. Clifford Bleak, Deputy Commissioner of Police, representing the Commission of Police. Mr. Clifford Chambers, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Era One. Senior Superintendent, Mr. Vernon Ellis, Commanding Officer for the St. James Division. Other senior officers, members of my Central Executive Committee, to include the chairman and secretaries of the inspector's branch board. That's Inspector Jacqueline Brown and Inspector Blanche Codner. Other rank and file members, members of the rural police and retirees, Mother Marilyn and other family members, friends, well-wishers, good morning. And let me say a special good morning to our songbird, the greatest choir that Jamaica, that Jamaica ever have. This morning, as we pause to acknowledge the coma of death, we want to express our deepest sympathy to the family and the passing of a noble servant, Inspector Franklin Wayne Hunter, an author one said, authentic leaders forge strong relationship and inspires others to bring their human self to work. It is befitting that as I pay homage to the life of this distinguished servant who have given human service to this noble organization and the people of Jamaica, that I want to say to you, Mother Marilyn, and family, thank you for loaning him to this organization. He was a trailblazer. He inspires confidence. He was a consummate professional who epitomizes the, all the attributes that anyone would discern from a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. He was brave in his, the execution of his duties. He was fearless and he continues to give of himself and touching lives in a very special way. Every aspect of society that he was tasked to police, he did it with humility and humanity at the forefront. Nobody was allowed to be disrespected under his watch. So today, as we celebrate his life, we underscore the importance of continuity of service and beseech those who would have not seek to grasp the reality that national security is paramount to the pillars of success for Jamaica to advance and to achieve a 2030 vision. Inspector Hunter have distinguished himself in the execution of his duty by leading from the front. It is befitting that in paying homage to him that we extrapolate from his qualities and seek to lend service to the people of Jamaica by policing the space and the place and lending your support to the Jamaica Constabulary Force. It is one attribute that he would have loved for you to embrace. And in continuance of his legacy, I beseech you to lend that support to the people of Jamaica and the Jamaica Constabulary Force. 
May his soul rest in peace and light perpetually shines upon him. And one day we'll meet where all will be equal at the foot of the cross. What good, my brother. While DSPU Williams Mullins is on her way, <clears throat> let me recognize the presence of our retired members. Um, retired ACP, and there might be others in their gazetted rank when they were retired, and others be recognized, and our volunteer chaplains as well in the congregation. Thank you. To the ministers on the platform, chaplain, to... DCP Blake, ACP Chambers, and all other senior officers in the house, all other rank and file officers, family members, well-wishers, good morning. I stand here today to represent my batch, Gilbert, as we were commonly called, of which Inspector Franklin Hunter was a member. My colleagues have chosen me to say a few words on behalf of the batch. On September 12, 1988, 125 young men and 25 brave young ladies braved the odds of Wild Wild Gilbert and headed to the training school at Twickenham Park to fulfill our dreams of becoming police officers. Some of us made it all the way to training school that day it took weeks for others to reach. Eventually, we got there. We were total strangers. Knew no one there. But Gilbert taught us to be a family. What we experienced was nothing short of miracles. We found safety and comfort in the arms of each other. Albeit that we were from humble beginnings, we went into a training school that had no light, no water, and of course no food. So our staple meal was salt mackerel and white rice for breakfast, dinner, and supper. And barely without water, so you can imagine what that was. However, we were not daunted. It true, bring out true resi resilience, unity, and camaraderie among us, and we kept an eye out for each other. Anta was also always a very quiet person, but he would not hesitate to assist wherever he can. Some persons may not have remembered him from training because he was very quiet. However, for the most part, although many of us would not have seen him over third, almost 35 years, because when we were dispatched, we went all over the country. But we kept the bonds floating with the WhatsApp groups. And of course, every year, we look forward to our grand reunion. So while we were looking forward to our reunion, which is the weekend of the 30th of September every year, we got the sad news. While Mr. Kane, who was the mastermind behind everything, was busy making contacts to make sure all the persons we have not seen in a long time would show up, then we got the news that Franklin exited. Once more, the chain has been broken. A link is now missing. Gilbert will never be the same without Franklin. We'll always remember him. Though he's gone, his smile is gone forever, and his hands we can no longer touch. We still have so many memories of the one we love so much. His memory is one of our keepsake with which 
we will never part. God has him in his keeping. We'll keep him in our heart. May his soul rest in peace. By the way, by the, before I stand, let me see the other Gilbert members who are in the congregation. Please stand, please stand wherever you are. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming out to celebrate the life of my father, Inspector Anthony Hunter. And today, we gather here to honor him. As we bid farewell to him, we f reflect on the profound, hold on, on the profound impact he had on our lives and the lasting memories he leaves behind. But before I go further into this, I stumbled upon a poem that fits the way I feel it's good. So it goes, if tears could build a stairway, if tears could build a stairway and memories a lane, I would walk right up to heaven and bring you back again. No farewell words were, on, were spoken, no time to say goodbye. You were gone before I knew it and only God knows why. My heart still aches with sadness and secret tears still flow. What it meant to love you, no one can ever know. But now I know you want me to mourn for you. you know. But no. But now I know you want me to mourn for you no more. To remember all the happy times. Life still has much in store. Since you'll never be forgotten, I pledge, I pledge to you today, a hollow place within my heart is where you always stay. Throughout his life, my father embodied the value the values of compassion, integrity, and kindness. He had a genuine interest in people and had a remarkable ability to make everyone around him feel valued and heard. His warm smile and infectious laughter could brighten in even the darkest of days, leaving an indelible mark on our hearts. My father, Above all, my father cherished his family. He was a pillar of strength, always there to offer guidance, support, and unconditional love. The memories we shared, the laughter we enjoyed, and the lesson he imparted will forever be etched into our hearts. His presence may no longer be with us, but his spirit will live on through the love we shared and the value instilled with us. As we bid we are farewell to my father today, let us not mourn the loss of his physical presence, but celebrate the incredible life he lived. Let us remember his contagious joy, his unwavering love, and his profound impact on all those who had the privilege of knowing him. Rest in peace, dear father. Your memory will forever be a source of strength and inspiration. We love you. I thank you all for being here today to honor the life of my dad, for being so caring and kind with your condolences and supports to the family. I want to give a special thank you to the JCF with all that they have done in entirety. 
As a part of this tribute, I'll sing the last song for my dad. It was something that we shared together. In the land of fadeless days lies the city for square. It shall never pass away, and there is no night there. God shall wipe away your tears. There's no death, no pain or fears, and they count not time by year. There is so much I could say about my dad, but I would have to stand here for hours and end. Time does not permit that. On that note, I will give a synopsis that stands out in my memory about my dad. My dad was industrious, disciplined, jovial, neat, punctual. He was a great motivator, supporter, protector, a man of his word, and the list goes on. As a child, I clearly understood that he was a dad of his word, and whenever he would make a promise, he always followed through. So I would try to be on my best behavior that I would receive favorable promises. I remember that on many occasions, would visit school unannounced to see if myself and my brothers' deportment was up to standard and our uniform clean and tidy. It would fill my heart with joy when he would say, I love all my children and I pray for them. I'll never forget the plethora of special moments spent with dad growing up. In the last few years leading up to him passing, I truly experienced and understood even more appreciate his laughter and long phone calls we share. The memory that stands out in my mind the most is the last voice conversation with dad, which was on my birthday, May of this year. My dad did warm my heart with such sincere words of encouragement and reassurance. He said, if no one else loves you, just know that I love you. And as he continued to explain about the importance of the father's role in which we both agreed. I then continued to expound on the role of the father biblically and that I do appreciate him as my dad. He then mentioned that he couldn't have said it any better and I'm a daughter after his own heart. Before ending the call, he said, I'll see you soon, I love you. I know if death never had a hold on dad, I would have, I would have seen him. He would have visited because he was a man of his word. I have no doubt, and I'm sure, that he, that he was a father, friend, motivator, support to many, many here. And he will be greatly, greatly missed. Thank you. Thank you. When links 
of life far broken and loved ones depart. Life goes on, but memories never fade. For as long as we live and remember, they will always be in our hearts and their memories live on forever. Officiating ministers, Pastor Chambers, Pastor Stone, Pastor Dr. Gary Badu Fletcher, Pastor Dexter Dennis, other members of the clergy, members of the bereaved family, hardworking members of the JCF, friends and well-wishers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Kindly allow me to extend sincere condolences to the bereaved family. In particular, Frank's mother, Aunt Merle, his siblings and children. I can only imagine how sad and heartbroken you are today because of the loss of your loved one, your son, your brother, your father, your uncle and friend. But let me encourage you to be strong, for God is our fortress, he is our refuge and strength during difficult times. And I'm sure he'll see you through. As we celebrate the life of an incredible human being, a true nation builder, Inspector Franklin Hunter, who lived a life of impeccable character and integrity. He was an inspiration, a mentor, and a role model. When I reflect on his journey from childhood to adulthood, Frank could have chosen any career he wished, and I tell you, he would have been a standout. However, I am convinced that Frank was destined to be a police officer. As young boys growing up in Germantown, it was obvious that Frank was a leader among his peers. At times, we wonder if we would have our own modern-day Jesse James or Billy the Kid. For oftentimes, when we go to the shop or to the pipe where we fetch water or even to school, Frank would be seen with his own toy gun practicing to become a lawman. I'm sure John Wayne could not outdo him. He was always quick to the draw. To know Frank was to love him. He was principled, fair and fearless, kind, humble, and honest. His at work and commitment and dedication to law enforcement saw him rose through the ranks of the JCF as he became an exemplary leader, a shining light, and a beacon of hope, not only to members in the force, but also members of the community. And so today it is fitting that we celebrate a life well lived, though short. A lasting legacy of someone who cared without restraint, smiled with warmth, loved without measure, worked tirelessly, and fear God. Yes, we are sad and heartbroken today, but heaven is rejoicing. One of our singers penned the words which beautifully 
describe my friend. Gramps Morgan, in his song, says, if you give a little more than you take, and if you try to fix a little more than you break, and if you are the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain, then there's a place for people like you. If you stand up for those on their knees and lend a voice to those who cannot speak, and if you shine a little light to give sight to the ones who lost their way, then there's a place for people like you. Truly, he is gone but is not forgotten. May his soul rest in peace and eternal light shine upon him. I thank you. Officiating ministers, chaplains, senior members of the JCF, rank and file members of the JCF, family members, friends, all. Today, I, as a friend, I'm here not to mourn the dead, but to rejoice for the fact that Frank lived and he inspired us along the way. Frank is the kind of person who would walk up to me and one thing I, I chuckled at earlier on was when uh, his colleague said that he was very quiet. Because growing up with Frank, we didn't think so. <laughs> but interestingly, as he matured, he got quieter and started to exude this this humility that was just like, oh, Frank, really? Frank is the kind of guy who would walk up and say, boy, Kelly, <clears throat> come here. Last time I see your belly, and it's so big, you know, I'll go on. And I said, boy, anyway, anybody tell you, say you're fat, you don't have to answer them. You're bigger than that. <laughs> A sense of humor. We were kids together growing up in church, and... We were born in an era when people weren't only of the belief, but they would say to your face that children should be seen and not heard. And Frank was the guy who would stand there, look up in your eyes, ask you why, and wait for the answer. Of course, that made him a troublemaker. <laughs> that made people see him as a, as a disruptor. But he had a creative mind. And even at a young age, it was very clear that he was intolerant of injustice. Even when it's meted out by someone who was an adult. That also made him a troublemaker. I'm going to share something with you, and you might ask why I'm sharing this, but because there's a lesson in it. Frank, Sam, and I, we, and you'll see Sam later, we were at church. There's a big apple tree in um, Sister Marshall's yard. We wanted some apples, but, you know, it was still Sabbath, and, you know, Sister Marshall wouldn't let us have the apples, so we wouldn't venture. So, as good Adventist young, young, young boys, we know how to find a crutch stick and pull down the sun. <laughs> so we got the sun to set early, and we had a plan. I won't tell you whose plan, because the person can hear me. <laughs> so, we decided that we would create a scene Somebody would run from the apple tree and we would run after the person and tell Sister Marshall that, look, you can't let the boy come and trouble your apple tree. And Sister Marshall was so grateful. She said, does them do it all the time, you know. Anyway, we're going to take some food on a friend. <laughs> I'm saying this to say, we were creative in our thinking. And had it not been for parents who took time to be parents and to put God at the center. What the counselor said a while ago, just the thought of Frank with a gun would have been scary. But because of good parenting and God at the center, we turned out different. I want to... Since I can't talk to Frank, I'm just saying to us as parents, we're in an age where people are erasing God. 
Let us keep God in our homes and in the minds of our children. So at the end of it, when we and when your children have lived their lives, they can be spoken of the way we are speaking about Frank today. Aunt Merle, thank you. You are appearing for so many of us. When my mother died, I claimed her as my mother. Yes, and she did a good job. As teens, we were in a space where we were taught to be creative. Mr. David Smalling, I saw you earlier on. He gave us the microphone and said, each of us, even those who were disruptors and causing problems in class, write a sermon and preach. And he would teach us public speaking and all of that. And we all benefited from that. Can we have more people doing that for our young people today? It's one step to change the world. In closing, let us continue to celebrate his life. And let us remember that his passing is, it just reminds us that life is short. Life is short and we're just passing through. So all the people you haven't told that you love lately, tell them and live your life. Let them see that what you said is true. God bless you. Officiating ministers, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good after, good morning. Franklin embodied the characteristics of a true leader. Integrity, self-awareness, courage, respect, empathy, gratitude, and delegation. We grew up together in the same yard. We share a grandmother. Looking back now, I can tell you he knew how to delegate responsibilities. I don't quite remember him doing much of the chores, like carrying the water, washing dishes, or sweeping yard. But we could never be mad with him. His pleasant smile, charm, and charisma would slay every sarcasm on the lips. Everyone felt special around him. We were cuz. I am sure he had heard of my father's passing. And I know if it was under different circumstances, he would have been there. Given his support. Because that was just who he was. On his behalf, I would like to leave these words of encouragement to you, his colleagues, family members, and friends. Aspire for greatness. Opportunity should be equal, must be equal, but achievement remained independent. The true measure of a man is not what he dreams, but what he aspires to be. Whether you fail or succeed is irrelevant. What is most important is whether you are excited about each and every moment of your life because of the work you do and the people who are around you. Be consistent. Success is not always about greatness. It's about consistency. Not just show up for work. Be punctual. Be prepared. Be proactive. Effort plus talent equals success. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. Persevere. Failure is not fatal, neither is success final. It is the courage to continue that counts. Persevere. Believe in yourself. If you don't, who will? Believe in yourself is the anchor to exceptional leadership. Why? 
I'm glad you asked. It fosters self-confidence, which allows you to manage and inspire others with assurance and direction. Follow the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated. This is a life-changing approach that can give you the chance to see the good in other people while spreading positivity all around. Spend time with the people you love, your spouse, your companion, your children, your parents. They will not always be around. We are reminded in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to born and a time to die. Be exceptional. Nelson Mandela once said, I found that nothing is life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. There is no passion to be found plain small. In settling for lives less than the one you are capable of living. So therefore, my friends, take chances professionally. Dream big. Be goal-driven. Set life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals, and spiritual goals. To achieve, apply discipline and consistency. Help someone along the way. Each one, reach one, and continue to strive for excellence always. Thank you. I think we are doing well with time so far. A slight change after the second lesson by the daughter, Francieta Hunter. The remembrance will be done by Mr. Samuel Johnson, friend, and the eulogy by Senior Superintendent of Police, Mr. Vernon Ellis. So that's the change. Um, the program continues as it is in your program. The second lesson is taken from Psalms 98, and I'll read in your hearing. O give, O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arms hath gotten him the victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation, his righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth towards the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of a psalm, with trumpets and sound of carnet, Make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills be joyful together. Before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth, with righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, members of the constabulary, pastor of the church, other distinguished persons, members of the bereaved family, a pleasant afternoon.
Today we are gathered here to remember and celebrate the life of Franklin Wayne Hunter, a remarkable individual who left an indelible mark on all our hearts. Franklin, as was mentioned by Mr. Arnold Kelly, was an adventurous young man. He loved apples, and there was an apple tree in his yard. And one day he climbed up in that tree, and his mother said to him, Franklin, calm down. Well, he never responded immediately in the affirmative. But shortly after, Franklin and a limb from the tree came crashing down. <laughs> Luckily for him, he wasn't hurt. Franklin was a brilliant and witty young man. We attended church together from, I would say, baby stage, huh? And there were times when we have to say the 13 memory texts in the quarterly at our church. And Franklin was only required to know one of the texts because everybody was given one to do, 13 of us. But Franklin would know all 13 texts. And I would put him right next to me in case I should buck. <laughs> he would help me. It so happened that Franklin went to many other schools before he came to Harrison Memorial High School, where I was also a student. Franklin was one grade ahead of me. That I was happy for, because I use him as a resource. <laughs> it so happened that one day at break time, I went to Franklin's class and said, Franklin, I didn't get to finish this science homework, so I want you to help me. But Franklin did not have his science book with him that day. So he was walking around looking into the other classmates' desks to see if any of them brought their science book. He found one. He took it out. Immediately the owner of the book said, Franklin, put back my book. And Franklin looked at him and said, What man, wait a man, I'm sure Sammy something, you know. Hold on, man. And he said, I don't care, put it back. Well, Franklin didn't pay him any mind. He kept on turning the pages, looking for what he wanted, and the guy came and snatched the book. And Franklin is always calm, never use any decent language, never get upset, never use derogatory terms to people. And he looked at the guy, and while he was walking away for about 10 minutes, and Franklin said, you are a P.I.G. <laughs> now, at my school, at our school, Harrison, you don't do that. You will be severely punished if not suspended. And so the classmate said, I'm going to tell teacher. The staff room was only 10 steps away. Soon, who came out? The farm room teacher. Franklin. I am very disappointed in you, in calling so-and-so a pig. But Franklin turned around and knocked his chest. Me, miss? I would never do that. <laughs> and the teacher, and the teacher said, the teacher said, Franklin, are you saying that so-and-so is lying? And Franklin said, yes, miss, he is. And so the teacher said, so what did you say? And Franklin said, I said he is a P.I.G. <laughs> and the teacher rolled her eyes and getting angry and said, and what is that? And Franklin said, a perfect, intelligent gentleman.
and as you know, the rest is history. <laughs> Franklin had an ability to excel in athletics. He was an excellent high jumper, and he gained first place in doing so. But it was not just his physical prowess that set him apart. He had a natural gift for conversation. You know who can talk? He enjoyed engaging in meaningful discussions, always willing to share his thoughts and listen to others. His words had a way of enriching our lives, leaving us with new perspectives and deeper understandings. In 1982 through to 1987, Franklin and I embarked on a daily journey of learning. We both were influenced by a poem entitled, His Words Are Words of Wisdom. This was Franklin's favorite poem, which inspired us to study a new word every day for five years. And we would seek to use this new word at least three times throughout the day to each other. We were determined to expand our vocabulary and broaden our horizon as we sought to understand the etymology of words. Those cherished moments of shared knowledge and friendship will forever hold a special place in my heart. Every year for Franklin's birthday, if we don't meet on that date, we would meet shortly after, and we would recite the poem. And if I don't recite it today, I wouldn't be doing justice in remembering my friend. His words are words of wisdom by Albert Einstein. Words are the vehicle of thought. The magic means by which we are taught. They are the messengers that tell us the way to heaven, the way to hell. Words of a wondrous winning way, when here we know just what to say. But when we fail to choose them right, they change our day to darkest night. Words soothe our souls. Words rouse our fears. Words touch our hearts. Words bring the tears. Words build us up. Words tear us down. Words make us smile, and words make us frown. Words make us good, words make us bad, words make us weep, and words make us glad. We bless our curse by what we say. Lord, teach us how to talk, I pray. Teach us wise words. Teach us their power. Teach us to use them hour by hour in such a way that we may know we'll bless the world wherever we go. Franklin, Franklin life's, rather, Franklin's life was anchored in his deep faith as a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He had a profound love for biblical discussions and sought to understand and share the wisdom of the scriptures with others. Throughout his journey, his faith provided him with strength, comfort, and guidance, shaping his character and influencing all those around him. He attended the Montego Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church, where he served as crowd control officer during crusades and ensuring um, the well-being of others. His dedication to his faith extended beyond the walls of the church, for at times... Well, let me say, when he was a member of Vaughnsfield Seventh-day Adventist Church and its Pathfinder Club and the bigger youth organization for which Mr. Kelly spoke about, that preaching skill and speaking skill that he spoke of, when he was a member of that, we all thought he would be a pastor, not as a, a police officer. But those, along with his parents and his mother in particular, instilled in him the values of discipline, integrity and service. His commitment to excellence earned him the role of drill master for the Pathfinder Club. And you know, he was always represented 
the epitome of professionalism as he was always impeccably dressed in his uniform. Inspector Hunter was indeed a true crime fighter who believed in making Jamaica a place to live, a safe place to live, raise families, and do business. In so much that in the Canterbury standoff in Montego Bay, he placed his life on the line, showing his true love for the security and protection of the citizens of St. James. Inspector Hunter demonstrated true patriotism to his country and to the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Ladies and gentlemen, even when he was shot, the heroic and maroon spirit kept him fighting. This is an indication of his truthfulness to his motto, to serve and protect. This hero and a nation builder, Franklin Wayne Hunter, puts service above self. Franklin's dedication to his community extended way over. He would volunteer with Farm Heights Primary School, participating in various community activities. He was a role model citizen, an impeccable law enforcement officer, and as I said before, a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. But above all, he was a dedicated father, loyal friend, and a loving child. Countless stories exemplify Franklin's selfless and courage, and one of them stands out in my mind. On that fateful day at Montego River, when I found myself on the verge of falling in, not being able to swim, Franklin saved my life. He caught me by the foot, and he held me until help came. This was a testimony of his bravery and his unwavering commitment to the well-being of others. Thus, this action demonstrated true friendship and helped to solidify the bond between he and I. Franklin had a unique sense of style. He loved to dress up. and adorn himself with suits and bow ties <laughs> that reflects his personality. But his true beauty lies in his character. Honest, loyal, dedicated, and patriotic. As a police officer, he served well. He was a trusted friend and always there to lend a helping hand when he can. Franklin leaves behind a legacy of love and compassion. I could not remember Franklin today without remembering his mother, who he loved so dearly. Every time I talk with Franklin, because I live close to the mother, he would always say, and tell Aunt Merle. Everybody call Mrs. Merlin Hunter Aunt Merle. She's everybody's aunt. Loving lady, a spiritual lady, a lady who loved the Lord and followed the Bible in training these children the way they should go. And now that they are old, they never departed from it. Mrs. Hunter, please stand let everybody see who this great lady is who brought forth this distinguished gentleman or body lane here today. Let them see you. Thank you so much, Aunt Merle. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. As I wrapped up, Franklin will be deeply missed, but his presence will forever remain in our hearts. And I pray that his sleep or his slumber will be short. Rest in tranquility, my brother, friend, colleague, son, father. 
rest. Until Gabriel sounds the trumpet and Jesus will say, well done, well done, well done, thou good and faithful servant, Franklin, I believe in faith, enter into the joy of the Lord. Until then, until then, until then, our hearts will go on singing. Until then, with joy, let us carry on. Until that day, our eyes behold that city. Until then, walk good. Take the Savior with you, for you dare not walk alone. song that I'm going to ask the congregation to, to sing lustily as I invite the deacons to take up their respective places and I'll ask you to rise as we offer prayer so that God will add his blessings to what you can give to aid the poor. The deacons I'm going to ask you to stand I'll ask Scott Miller, I said Miller to join me here in the singing of this song. It is the Lord's my shepherd. It will be. Please stand, deacon, deacons. I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you very much for today. It's a blessing. And we ask, oh God, that as your people will return a portion of what you have blessed them with, it will go towards the intended purpose. Please be with us now. We pray in Jesus' holy name. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastor's green, he leads me. The quiet waters by He lives, He lives, He lives I know that my Redeemer, yes, He lives He lives, He lives within my heart My soul, He Amen. 
Good afternoon to you, church, clergy, DCP Blake, ACP Chambers, other senior officers, Federation Chairman, the members of the rank and file present, our past association of officers from the Era One chapter, retired ACP, Mr. Paul Ferguson, was once Mr. Hunter's boss at Era One. So, as the commanding officer for St. James, I'll do the eulogy for Mr. Hunter. So let me just uh, give you a little brief before I get into the eulogy. So when I got the call from a fellow commanding officer, and the fellow commanding officer said to me that, um, you know, I have some very bad news and something bad has happened. So, you know, I said, how oh, bad is it? And the commander said, um, you know, it's Franklin, and he collapsed, and, you know, it's not looking good. So, as a commanding officer, I walked back into my office, and I said, you know, it is a time to have faith. I realized that he was in the United States, and I accept that the advancement in medicine and technology is there. So I started smiling to myself and said, all right, they are going to put him on a life machine and they are going to do all that they can because this is the United States and he's going to come back to me. So I am not even going to break this news to the staff as yet. I'm going to give it a few minutes and hoping for the best. At the time... I got a call from somebody in the coroner's office and when they said, boy, this is the situation. So I started to, I told them who I was, started to tell them that, hey, you know, you must do something. There's something that you can do. You must do what you can do. And the coroner's office kind of went silent and they said, boy, we understand, but there's nothing that we can do. So I said, well, I started to think about it. I said, wonder if I should start to ball inside my office. Or I should lay down on the ground and ball because nobody's inside here. Or I said, I should go outside and start to ball outside. And then, you know, because I've known Franklin for many years. And as a commander, this is the person that you want to support you as a supervisor. He's always there. So I reached out to the chaplain very supportive unit, and I said, Chaplain, we have another one, and it's a big one, so let's prepare ourselves. We must go and face the men and break this news to them. I got some advice from the chaplain and the unit. said that um, it's hard, it's tough uh, being so close to him, but think of the things that made you laugh about Mr. Hunter. And even coming to do the eulogy, I... I'm still thinking of them. And, you know, though the pain is there, it's not so much because of the nice, fun moments we shared. I'll share just two of them with you. One, we got new police officers to the division, and it's customary that we start out with prayer. 
And as everybody would have outlined, this is a gentleman who is always willing to tell people about God, pray, and share the message. So I ask Mr. Hunter to pray for the welcoming of the young men, which he did. So in the afternoon, I saw one of the young trainees ask him, how is it going if he is all right? And he said, yes, things are right, but super, I have a question for you. And I said, go ahead with the question. The trainee said, the inspector that you asked to pray, is he a foreign police? <laughs> so I, I was a little bit flustered by the question. So, you know, I said, officer, you are to explain your question. I'm not understanding what are you asking if the officer is a foreign police. So, yeah, because, you know, he has a, a little, so I, I was like, a little what, you know? I'm trying to get it out, and the officer is like, sir, he has a little accent. So I say, you, you're going to get in some big trouble, because <laughs> there you go, your first day on the job, and you're saying that one of your senior officers has a small accent. So I found it funny after, and I had to laugh. I laugh a lot about it after, because Mr. Hunter is a polished individual, well-spoken. He attires himself, as his friend would have said. He's always clean, sharp-looking, and he represents the JCF well. That's the type of person he really is. I remember another one. DCP Blake mentioned the Era 1 OST and the type of support, and Mr. Ferguson is here, who was the commander. So the persons who were at the Era 1 OST, they were transferred from Mobile Reserve, there are some tough officers, well-trained, and they used to wear denims. Now, when an officer is a little bit darker than me, and they're wearing a denim, if it's dark, it's hard to see them. And we, all, we all know that. So there was this operation, and his supervisor at the time, my very good friend too, Mr. Broadbell, as DCP Blake would have mentioned, Mr. Broadbell was his supervisor, and... They went on an operation to catch some guys who were doing something bad. It was pre-dawn, kind of dust breaking, and they kept going closer and closer to the guys. But the guys were not seeing them because they were in denim and they are very dark in complexion. So they eventually held on to the guy and they took them into custody. So we were saying to the guys, why didn't you run? The guy said... How could we run when we couldn't see the police officers? We only kept seeing shadows moving. The officers were too dark in complexion. So the funny part of it is we are telling Mr. Hunter, and Mr. Hunter is cracking up and killing himself with laugh. And the constable turned to him and said, but Mr. Hunter, you dark too, you know? Mr. Hunter said, no, me dark, but Brady darker than me. <laughs> so those... Pieces would have kept me. The eulogy for late Inspector Franklin Wayne Hunter. This is a time to remember the fallen and honor his sacrifice. It is a time to remember the families that share in the sacrifice daily. And it is a time to reflect on our own morality and utter dependence on God. Join with me as I reflect in the mood of the stalwart of the Jamaica Constabulary Force as we eulogize him. Franklin Wayne Hunter was born on October 30th, 1965, to parents, Miss Marlene and Mr. Ralston Hunter, in the quiet district of Vaughansfield, St. James. He was the second of four children. He was educated at the Vaughansfield Infant and Primary, Marlon Secondary, Harrison Memorial High School, he was an ardent Christian from all of you and my experience to you about him. He was baptized at the Vaughansfield Seventh-day Adventist Church. He was active in church and he was a member of the Pathfinder Club. His love for drill and early was an early indication that he was inclined to military or paramilitary service in the future. The very conscious and God-fearing Franklin was also a warrior at heart, 
And so, in an attempt to truly experience our beloved, it is indeed quite fitting that I compare him with the life of Inspector Franklin Hunter, with that of the psalmist David, as it is symbolic of a shepherd whose main responsibility is to protect those around him. Believing that the Lord is his shepherd and that he made him to lie down in green pastures, he led him beside the still waters. He believed that the Lord always had the capacity to restore his soul, and so he was led always in the path of righteousness. With these words of David as his mantra, Franklin was never faced. He took on all challenges. He had the greatest ambition and delivered the highest service to the nation in the capacity as a policeman. After graduating from Harrison Memorial High School, he sought employment and was gainfully employed at the Northern Security Company. Franklin, like David, knew that occasionally the shepherd had to traverse treacherous terrain. Again, he had complete trust and confidence in God. He trusted God in, the, in his direction and guidance. He had no fear even in the shadow of death, and so by faith he pursued the Jamaica Constabulary Force. He enlisted the Jamaica Constabulary Force on September 12, 1988, a memorable day. They were called the Gilbert Batch as persons who are Jamaicans. Old enough will always remember that day. He was initially posted at the Mobile Reserve, which is now called Specialized Operations Branch. On April 30th, 1989, he married Joylin Clark. The union bore two children, Franklin Jr. and Franchetta. The green pastures and still waters were indicative of a life in which Franklin was abundantly blessed and further illustrated the benefits that he derived from a God-led life. He desired to serve and protect the communities around and gave great pleasure in doing so. He was very active in various policing districts. He occupied and received several commendations for his exemplary service, always engaging the community groups. And lastly, the Westgate Hills Rosemont Gardens Association, JSIF programs, to name a few, the Adelphi Community Youth Club and all those other areas which he has served. He is loved and feared in the streets and I can recall seeing some vendors, heard them saying that, um, uh, make me move, because I don't want the black one to come take up the things. Them, because when the black one are work, nobody can put on nothing inside of the town. They were referring to our good friend and colleague, the retired inspector, Hunter. Yeah, though he walked through the valley of the shadow of death, he feared no evil, for the Lord was with him. His rod and his staff comforted Inspector Hunter. Due to his ill health, at times the task was surmountable, but David's God kept him. He is remembered as a good conversationalist, and his friend would have shared that earlier. Those of us who know him well, we can attest to the fact that most conversation with Inspector Hunter left us with some biblical knowledge of some sort. It was always his conviction that God had prepared a table before him in the presence of his enemies and that he was anointed by the leader. With the conviction came his first promotion in 2001. He was promoted to corporal. He continued through the ranks until 2017 when he was elevated to the highest rank and file rank inspector of police. Many male co-workers can recall him being referred to as Papa, while the females would call, would refer to him as Father. He had excellent relationship with his seniors, and as his commanding officer for the past five years, I can attest to his outstanding performance. His peers and juniors alike are willing to testify to the performance of this officer. His juniors attest that Inspector 
Hunter would have shared knowledge with them, encouraged them to the best of their ability. He was one of those who led by example. His briefing and debriefing of staff, you could hear him telling them, I tell you, you know, I'm telling you what the policy says, and no, 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 make me go a big yard because you know the one of you do. Another famous speech. When I go to the superintendent asking meeting, my head must be held high. This is the type of proud supervisor and leader that Inspector Hunter was. Surely goodness and mercy followed him all the days of his life while he served. Franklin understood clearly the promise, blessing of protection like David and Solomon. Franklin has been a protector for his family, a father. He was like a real shepherd to his sheep. He also increased his family with the birth of his third child, Javier. He was a family man and shared a special relationship with his mother, Marlene, who, like any good mother, looked after him even in his adulthood. Franklin believed that if you do good, good will follow you. He lived an example, exemplary life. He gave unwavering support. He fought the good fight, and he has finished his course. Inspector Franklin Hunter served the St. James Division with distinction. He served the Mobile Reserve, the Era 1 Headquarters, Hanover Division, and St. James Division. He later, he later served his longest stint as a sub-officer in charge of the Mount Salem Police Station. He could be relied on to carry out his task. He was known to have excellent station management skills and his qualities will always be emulated by supervisors across the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Inspector Hunter maintained a high level of integrity and professionalism. He is remembered as that member who will always go the extra mile to make good on his word. He was known to be a psalmist, a true David. He served the Jamaica Constabulary Force for 34 years, 8 months, and 12 days. During his sterling service, he was the recipient of 20 commendations for recovery of illegal weapons and the arrest of notorious men who were wanted by the security force. Inspector Franklin Hunter, whilst on some well-deserved rests abroad, made his transition on May 24, 2023. We have lost a member who gave sterling contribution to nation building. The St. James Division and by extension the entire Jamaica Constabulary Force extends our gratitude to the family members of Inspector Franklin Hunter for sharing your David with us. He is lovingly remembered by his mother, Marlene Hunter, children, Franklin, Jr., Francetta, Javier, brothers, Alan, Eric, Marvin, niece, nephews, other family members, and his entire JCF family. The reality is we will never lose people we love, even to death as their legacy lives on through us in every act thought and decision we make. Let the memories of the times you shared with Franklin give you comfort remembering that his life was rich because of what he shared with us. And he will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you. Thank you, SSB Ellis. The time has come when we will listen to a word from God. The person that the Lord has laid this mantle on today is none other than the host pastor of this church, Pastor Franz Chambers. He's a man of God. I, I would say this, he is a tall man, but he preaches according to my height. But before he comes with the message, we will be rendered with some excellent musical selections 
by the one and only. You will go nowhere else in the Caribbean and listen to another law enforcement choir that sounds as good as the Jamaica Constabulary Force Choir. So to prepare the way, the choir will sing and the next voice will be that of our presenter or pastor, Pastor Franz Chambers. God bless you all.
Amen. What fitting rendition for such an occasion. He will not put on you more than you can bear. And the truth is that we have those days when the storm is passing over. But the good thing about a storm passing over is that it's doing just that. It's passing. It will not be there forever. And that's the comfort and assurance we have as members of the body of Christ, as children of the living God, that the storm will pass over. Senior officers, family members, and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, 
Good afternoon. This afternoon is a very difficult one, I know, for the family of the hunters. Now, my connection with Franklin, Inspector Hunter, rather, goes back very far as Aunt Merle, Inspector Hunter's mommy, was my Sabbath school teacher from the kindergarten, the primary level, uh, children's choir director, my Bible, Bible class teacher. So I sat at her feet for quite some time, and it has been a privilege and an honor. Part of what and the reason why I am today a minister of the gospel. In other words, friends, the impact of this family goes far and deep. And what you see in Franklin is a reflection of the kind of parental guidance that he would have received through his development. And it is indeed mournful and difficult, I know. I will not tell you that we understand. I will not tell you that I understand. I can only say I sympathize because I know God is a good God who, will, who is always there. And he will always give you strength. And I know, a Hunter, you know that. But sometimes the knowledge doesn't transmit to the emotions when we face difficulties such as these. Uh, we may know, but we need a little reminder that he's still there. And he is your tower of strength. I'd like to extend condolences on behalf of the Kellys and family and my siblings. Uh, to you, Aunt Merle, to Marvin, to the rest of the family. Uh, Pastor Wallace has asked me also to extend his condolences to you. Today, I'll invite you to briefly walk with me over to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50, verse 25. The Bible says, And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. God will surely visit you. Shall we pray? Father, this is your moment to speak to your people. A group that is broken hearted. Who is in great turmoil as a result of the passing of this, your son. But Lord, I pray that you will have mercy upon us even in this time. I pray that you will move through this moment. And minister to every worshiper, every person present in this building. And for those who are listening on the outside. So that you will manifest yourself in a significant way. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. The Bible tells us of one of the most prolific figures of scripture. When you think of the ending of the book of Genesis... There is only one figure that will stand out in your mind. He is Joseph. He was the 12th son of his father. He was not liked by his brothers because they felt that he got too much attention. And so the scripture says that he was sold into Egyptian slavery because they couldn't find it within themselves to kill him. So he went into Egyptian slavery. He was allowed to serve in the home of one of the most powerful figures apart from the Pharaoh, that of Potiphar. While serving there, the Bible says that he was taken into, he was sent to prison because a woman told a lie on him. I won't get too much into that. But the Bible says, Joseph, while in prison, was interpreting dreams for the other prisoners. Innocent. But he was making a difference where he was. He was not in the comfort of his home, but he was still making a difference. He was not back under the comfort and protective care of Joseph. 
of Jacob rather, but he was making a difference. And even in prison, he was still making a difference. When his brothers came for food because he was elevated to the place of becoming prime minister due to the fact that he was a good planner. He was a master at his craft. The Bible said that his brother didn't even recognize him to the extent that he had to, he had to be the one to tell them, I am Joseph. You sold me into slavery. But what you meant for evil, God pulled it off for good. The church needs to understand Joseph was a reputable figure in Egypt. Joseph was a prolific figure in Egypt. Joseph was a one who was looked up to by the Egyptians, respected and revered. But there was one thing about Joseph. He never forgot his God. To the extent that when Potiphar's wife made a proposal, the inspired document said that Joseph declared, how can I do this wickedness? sin against my God you see your integrity is of greatest importance not your reputation the Bible tells us friends Joseph was a good man reputable figure notable figure but watch Joseph on his deathbed Joseph on his deathbed says Joseph took an oath in other words he asked them to to vow that they will take his bones from Egypt. Mercy. Now, now, now bear in mind, Joseph was prime minister in Egypt. Joseph was revered. He had horses and chariots. He had men at his command. But when he came down to his dying pillow, Joseph says, I don't want my bones to remain in Egypt. Egypt did well for Joseph. He was flourishing. He was advancing. He was being promoted. He was being revered. But Joseph knew that Egypt was not his destination. Can I say to the church that like Joseph, the Bible says, we will have to face death. You see, Joseph was powerful, but Joseph had to face death. And sometimes we believe that we are too powerful to face death. We think that it is because of our capabilities, our advanced intelligence that God has blessed us with that is going to give us some kind of free passage into another world. But I beg of you to understand the Bible says it is appointed for man once to die and after death comes the judgment. We are not aimless, purposeless beings wandering the earth. God made us for a purpose to worship him. And the wisest man Solomon says, it is the whole duty of man to serve God and keep his commandments. We are not here by chance. We are not the act of accident. We are not here by mere a mistake because even if your parents made a mistake God has a purpose even if your parents never planned for you God has a plan for your life and Joseph demonstrated that it doesn't matter what context you find yourself it is of greatest importance to maintain your character, your integrity, so that when you go down into the grave, even heaven can pause to say, there lives a servant of God. The Bible says, friends, he asked them, take my bones out of Egypt. I may have had fancy cars in Egypt, but take my bones out of Egypt. I may have had good stuff in Egypt. I may have had power in Egypt, but take me out of Egypt. I don't want my bones uh, that represents my substance. Take it out of Egypt. I need to be in the land of Canaan. Hmm. So in Exodus chapter 13, 
the Bible says that Moses, when they were getting ready to eat, leave Egypt, I, I tell you, we serve an amazing God. They were getting ready to leave Egypt after the plagues, after the destruction of, of Pharaoh's household, after, after God showed himself mighty in Egypt and they were leaving Egypt. The Bible says that Moses remembered. He remembered the bones of Joseph. And so the scripture says in Exodus 13, 19, And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you. Can I say to the family that God is visiting you today that God will be with you in the future the same God of yesterday is the same God today he is faithful he is true he is compassionate he is merciful you can walk with that assurance that God is going to be with you Joseph knew and recognized that there may come a time when slavery may bring his people into captivity. But he says, don't worry about it. God is going to visit you. And the Bible tells us, friends, that Moses took the bones of Joseph. And when you get down into Joshua, chapter 24, verse 32, the Bible says that they took the bones of Joseph which the children of Israel brought up out of the land of Egypt, buried them in Shechem, in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem. I, 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 all I'm saying to you is that Joseph may have lived in Egypt, may have worked in Egypt, may have been promoted in Egypt, but Joseph recognized it is not how well you do in Egypt. It is how you come up out of the grave. It is also how you go down. For if you go down outside of Christ, you are still in big trouble. For the Bible says that when the trumpet of God shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first. There is no reasonable reason to live your life without regard for God. There is no reasonable excuse to live your life outside of God. Because this is the only reason, he is, I should say, the only reason why you're still sitting up this afternoon. He is the only reason you got up this morning. He is the only reason you have the power to activate the intelligences of the brain that sits in this cranium. This small thing that allows the body to move. It is still God who allows you to be alive today. I can't preach to Franklin. I have to preach to you. I have to preach to someone who needs to realize this is not a mere ceremony where you come to look and, 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 and go back home. It is an opportunity to contemplate your own mortality and recognize that there is a God in heaven to serve. The same God who made man in the first place. One day he will come back and he will call man from the grave. May your name be on that list. May your name be on that number. I know promotions are good. And it's good to have your name in certain places in this country. It's good to have your name on certain records. But I beg you, make sure your name is on the bigger book. Because there's a book in heaven called the Lamb's Book of Life. And that is the only record that is significant. There are people who will walk through this earth and they never earn a degree. They never earn a promotion. But they understand and appreciate that I don't live by my own strength. I move and I live in the power of Almighty God. It is still God who is in charge. So I beg you, put your confidence in Him. I reassure the family that the same God who brought you this far will bring you much further. 
the same God who has brought you through Red Seas is the same God who will bring you through River Jordan. It is the same God who will bring you through the lion's den. It is the same God that will bring you from prison. It is the same God that will bring you through difficult times because nothing is impossible with God. This is your time. This is your chance. I'll say, tell you one thing, I'll take my seat and then you forget about me. I stood here, funeral service. The man who drove the parlor took the casket to the gravesite. The Wednesday after that, he came and said, Pastor, I need to talk with you. I need to make funeral arrangements for my father. That thing sits on me so much. He says, I, I, I have to make some funeral arrangements for my father. And on that very night, the, it is believed, I was told rather, that he passed. And it wasn't until the Sunday that my elder, Elder Willie, said to me, Pastor, you remember the gentleman who drove the earth? I said, yes. He said, he died. I said, no, it's not him who died. It's the father who died. He says, no, it, 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 it's, it's him. So both of them died. Let me tell you something. Life is not guaranteed. There is no guarantee of existence. You don't have uh, that kind of stamp of warranty. The truth is uh, that, that, that there is an expiration date and we don't know it. What you need to do is to live uh, your best life in Christ now so that when he says there is enough time, when death knocks, then you shall be ready. That's your hope. That's, that's your hope. It is in Christ. For he alone, he alone has power over death, hell, and the grave. Amen. Can the church say amen? amen. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the word, my pastor. With that said, I'm going to be inviting the family members to stand with me at this time. All family members, um, well, yeah, stand with me. We're just doing it a little differently this time. All family members stand, rest of the congregation remain seated. As they are standing, they are in need of our prayers. And we're going to be praying for them at this time. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we pause in this moment to recognize that even on sad days like this, you are still a good God. Lord, we place in your care, Father, those who stand before you. Lord, they are standing, but they are weak. So I pray that you'll be their strength. I pray that you'll be that bridge over troubled waters. I pray that you will be their balm in Gilead. I pray that you will administer to them the remedy that only you can administer in this period of sadness. Oh God, we pray that as they will make their way through the, the various episodes of life, I ask that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you will be with them every step of the way. Grant them peace in the midst of every storm. And, O oh God, even if you don't calm the storms around them, calm them to face the storms. Keep them now, I pray. Bless them now, I pray. Be behind them to propel them. Be beside them to stabilize them. Be before them to direct them and be above them to protect them. Guide them, this we pray, now and forever, in your holy name, amen and amen. You may be seated. As we go into the instructions, as we have our recessional, invite the bearer party to take up their positions now. Bearer party, it's your time. While I'm speaking, you can take up your positions. At the singing of the first verse of the song, Some Glad Morning, 
when this life is over. The choir members will proceed, followed by DCP Blake and other gazetted officers. The clergy and the chaplain will go before the bearer party. And orderlies, the wreath orderlies, hat orderlies, etc. Immediate family members behind those orderlies and the rest of the congregation will file out after. And so we're going to ask now that the bearer party. And so we are asking that the family members, as soon as we are through inside the sanctuary, to go straight to the car or cars assigned to you so we can line up for the procession to the graveside. So I'm asking you, do not socialize on the outside. Wait until after the graveside. Go straight to the vehicles as we prepare for the procession to the graveside. Line up the convoy to the graveside. On our way to the graveside, we will have the outriders, the clergy and the chaplains, will be preceding the hearse. Immediate family members will follow the hearse, gazetted officers and others after, in that order. Thank you very much. Invite the congregation to stand for the recessional him. Some glad morning when, when this life, life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Oh, sing it. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away, oh singing when I die, hallelujah by and by, I'll fly away. I've flown, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away, morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, just a and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. The morning when I die.
some boys up slow I'll fly away
Check your No, man, no, you need to look up. Where we Good man. Yes, I'm Where are you? Not in the Just try to park. You just
Hey, where are we going? Hey. <laughs>
And so, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be preparing now for the last post as soon as the workmen now. Last post. Officers to Silence everywhere, no talking, silence as of now. We are going to be going into the wreath laying ceremony and that is the official wreath laying ceremony and the first wreath to be laid is of the next of kin the person of franklin winter jr son of this Followed by the commissioner's retreat, wreath. And this is done by ACP Clifford Chambers representing the commissioner. 
Association of Police. And this reef is called the JCF's Reef. move to the divisional reef to be laid by senior superintendent of police Mr. Vernon Ellis commanding officer for the St. James division the division to which inspector Hunter last served Next wreath to be laid is the station's wreath. This is done by Assistant Superintendent of Police, Theo Hales, Zone 3. the next wreath to be laid and that is the police federation's wreath to be laid by inspector fletcher Sergeant Godfrey Sangster. to the official conclusion of this aspect of the service. Other reads will be laid. So we're going to ask 
Pastor Chambers to do the benediction, after which the official mourners will greet the family on their way out. Pastor Chambers, shall we pray? Oh God and our friend, we crave your peace, your mercy, and your blessing upon the family. We ask for strength that we will endure also to the very end. For those who have not yet made a surrender to you may now be a time of great change. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to ask the official mourners being led by ACP Chambers to greet the family on their way home.